brace yourself. This is really unexpected because in the past, I've always said amazing things about my trips to Disney. You know I love Disney. Disney is always a hit. I love Disney. But this time, I was not impressed. It's totally different. My family and I just got back from a Disney cruise followed by a week at Disney World. And I hate to say it, but it was one of the worst vacations I've ever had. Now you're probably thinking, I should blame the pandemic, but I can't. I totally blame Disney. In this vlog today, I'll just talk about the cruise part of our trip, but I'll post next about our resort and park trip that followed, as well as the cool secret eating spot I discovered in the Magic Kingdom. So be sure to subscribe so that you'll see those. So first, a little background. This was my second Disney cruise. The first one was five years ago, so I was 10 years old then, and it was actually my first cruise ever, and it was so good, and the service was so spectacular that it hooked my family on cruising in general. But after this cruise, I can say, without a doubt, I'll never cruise Disney again. Which is sad, because they've got a new ship coming out, and I really wanted to try it. First off, an acknowledgement. I know there's a pandemic going on. So things are different now than they were when we last cruised with Disney. And I do think that a lot of the problems that we had were a byproduct of the pandemic. But again, I put the fault with Disney and how they just aren't training their staff to keep up those Disney hospitality standards that used to be the best in the business. And they're cutting back on all the things we used to love while charging us more than ever. For example, when we first got on board, the mustard drill that we needed to go through should have been easier than it used to be from what I was hearing online. But the app that you do it with wasn't working and the cast members didn't know how to get it to work right. So they sent us back to our cabin thinking that we were good to go, but we weren't. So then we had to go back a second time to our muster point and wait in line to talk to another cast member until they could get it right. That was minor though. Also, the cast members just didn't like being asked questions. It used to be as though they just loved to interact with people. This time, definitely not. And I watch a lot of other YouTubers who have been saying the opposite. They've been saying how cast members seem so happy to be back at work. But when I think about it, the YouTubers that I watch are usually either trying to sell me cruises or they're big enough that they get free cruises in exchange for their vlogs. So they might be getting radically different treatment than average people like you and me. Then I went to the teen room, which they call Vibe, and I'll be honest, I was expecting a really great time because the Oceaneer Club I experienced when I was 10 was incredible. But the teen room had barely any events, and the private pool they offer us was closed almost the entire time, probably because they didn't have enough staff to keep an eye on us. The staff was not nearly as friendly as they used to be, too and they didn't try to get us teens to interact with each other much. It was pretty boring. I actually had a better time just exploring the ship on my own. Basically, unless they amp up the events for teens, you can just expect a place to hang out and listen to your AirPods. But I can do that at home. Then there's the food. It was terrible. I mean, frighteningly bad. And that's really sad because the only specialty restaurant they have is adults only. So if you're a teen and you're a foodie, you're out of luck and stop eating things like really bad cold pizza and cold mac and cheese. The one thing that was good was the Beauty and the Beast show. It was pretty close to Broadway caliber and the staging of it was extraordinary. But last time I went on a Disney cruise, they put on three really spectacular shows so that I could see a new one every night. But this time, they only had the one. So if you've been on a Disney cruise before, like I have, you're really going to be disappointed. But I think that it's the service that we had at dinner time that really shocked my family the most. With Disney, you have a specific cast member assigned to your family for every dinner, and you get the same one every time. And this guy was really intimidating and it made all of us feel really uncomfortable. So uncomfortable that we skipped our final meal just to avoid him. At each meal, he'd lecture us about how important it is that we give him an all five star review when they give us a survey at the end of the cruise. We were totally fine with that. We're the kind of family that always gives great reviews when people are nice. 
I mean, they are the backbone of the entire industry and they work so, so hard for it, usually not the greatest pay. So the first time he gave us this lecture, we were like, sure, fine, no problem. Even though he really did come on very strong about it. But then by our final night, we felt so uncomfortable and under so much pressure and kind of intimidated by the whole thing that we actually skipped breakfast the final morning just so that we wouldn't get another lecture from him. And while you might fault the cast member, I actually fault management. Because they're obviously putting their cast members under way too much pressure to get those 5 star reviews. That kind of pressure is just not good and isn't going to make happy cast members. And if the cast members aren't happy, then the guests aren't going to be happy either. Then what was really nuts was when we got the survey we needed to fill out, one of the questions was, did you feel pressured to give a 5 star review of your cast members? So obviously, this is something that Disney is dealing with a lot. So Disney, snap out of it and don't make your staff feel like they are going to get axed if they get any less than a 5 star review. Because your cast members are working in the middle of a pandemic. They're dealing with enough stress. I mean, what is Disney doing to this guy to make him feel like he has to bully guests into giving him 5 star reviews? The real bully here is clearly upper management in this case. I'm looking at you, Bob Chapek. So with the epically bad service, less entertainment, a boring teen room that really pales in comparison to what they offer younger kids, and really bad food, I can pretty much guarantee I won't be going on another Disney cruise ever. In fact, my dad even said that if someone offered him a free Disney cruise at this point, he wouldn't take it. Please hit that subscribe button because I'll be posting my newest full ship tour, then telling you about the first bad trip I've ever had to Disney World next. Plus, I'll be posting about the only bright spot of our vacation, which was a cool secret eating place in Disney World where we enjoyed a peaceful and, brace yourself, inexpensive meal away from the crowds. Thanks for watching!